Libra. Hello, Libra. Happy New Year. This is your forecast for January 2014. And as on all New Year's Eves, we put out our full year intentions for all the good things that we want to attract and what we want to let go of. But this year, specifically, it's going to be a double whammy for you because why the sun here is in conjunction with the new moon. And the new moon is when we always put our intentions out anyway, right? So on this day, you will have this double effect. And not only that, but you're going to have the powerhouse of Pluto conjunct it as well. And Pluto is your pivotal point of transformation, meaning rebirthing yourself, letting go of the old. It's rising up from these ashes. And just the last couple of days prior to New Year's, well, you probably already have lived through it if you're looking at the January side of this forecast, that it was a little bit uneasy, a little bit uncomfortable. People were on edge. You know, we, we have this Mars Uranus opposition going on. Uh, Mars in your, your first house, that is you. That's your rising sign. The energies that you want to bring up and out, those things that are important to you as far as your drive and your ambitions, your goals, and, and uh, Uranus coming here from your partner saying, what? You want what? Right? So your partner may not have the exact same opinion as you, uh, and that's okay as long as you can agree to disagree and still honor and respect one another for the goals that you're trying to reach right now on a personal level. If that is balanced out, New Year's Eve is going to set that on the chart and I see how you're going to be carving out a new path for the entire year of 2014. This is a year where you can really get ahead, all right? So we want to see how this can empower us on the inside. How can we bring that Plutonian energy up and create that sense of transformation which it is designed to do? Pluto shuts down on those things no longer, you know, important to us, that behooves us. You know how many times that we, we can feel that we're like in a rut? Well, this is like in the rut, getting out of it, but creating something now that can be refreshing, renewing empowering and just make sure that whatever new you're heading towards is not just another rut okay and why i say that it's the only thing you need to become a little conscious of is that uranus invokes change the need for change now when mars is over here and really drifty really wanting to power up and move ahead it becomes restless and feisty and it wants out of that rut, right? And Uranus is pushing behind it saying, well, I want change, I need change. Don't do change just for the sake of change itself because that may bring you from the one rut just into a new rut. And then down the road, you're in the same situation. So Pluto is here and it might feel a little challenging, but if you understand what's happening, you can take that power and create magic. So Uranus wants the change, Mars is ready to take action on it, but then Pluto is saying, but what do I want to change into? Where do I want to change into? And in order to see that, well, we've got to find out where your Pluto is, and that's within the home environment. It might be the real estate where you live, how you live. Um, there might be changes taking place within the family structure somewhere. And this might also open up for a crescendo of new impulses and uh, inspirations too coming in. Now, let's look at Saturn. Saturn for you is in your second house of income. That's the money you make uh, and you looking at how you can make it, how you can increase it, improve it. Uh, Saturn might have you thinking that you've got to work hard for it because that's what Saturn does, right? Keeps our nose to the grindstone. But uh, so, but the fourth house is family, so it might just be you thinking, how can I now support my family in a new and different way? Or it might just be that the changes coming up here from family might help the way you think about how you make your money. See what I'm saying? So it can go both ways. 
Now, let's just start from the top of the year here for you, uh, Libra. So we have a couple of dates for you so you can see what is taking place. January 1st, we got the Sun, the New Moon, we got Mercury, we got Pluto, we got Venus retrograde. That's stellium here for you in the fourth house. This is how you see yourself. It's your roots, it's your past, it's who you are uh, on the inner essence core of how you think. It's not, you know, like the rising sign, how other people see. This is how you see yourself. So there's that deep thinking of what it is you now want to express from this platform, from this foundation of where you stand January 1st is going to take place. And from it, I'm seeing the Sun is taking some action with square Mars on the very same day, leading up here to January 3rd, where it's going to be exact. But you're feeling it on January 1st, the impulse to make some change there. Also on January 3rd, we have Mars coming into opposition of um, Uranus. So there might have been some talks, say from Christmas up through New Year's, coming up to the 3rd of January, you might come to some conclusion on what it is this restlessness is about and where you might have your peace, say your peace. This is coming from you, the first house, Mars, and just make sure that, you know, it doesn't come out a little too abruptly. And I say it because Mars can be a little feisty and Uranus can be a little unpredictable. So you might even come to shock yourself here on this day. And this might be then a, a situation between you and a partner partner, whether that is a significant other as a spouse, or if it is somebody you're working very closely to, you know, or closely with, should I say, uh, there might be a little tension there. But that's not going to last long. Already on the 6th and 7th, here I see Mercury and Saturn, that is you uh, from the foundation of where you stand, coming in with some security that you're going to give, and it's coming from that base of your own true inner values, the cores of which now Saturn represents for you in that second house. And I see you communicating this lovingly because Mercury and Venus now, they're conjunct here on the seventh. So that will be concluded. Then you're good to go, but you're gonna be tested. You know, sometimes when we think that we can take a deep breath and say, ah, I got it all together. And then boom, here comes the universe. Are you sure you got it together? Because there is a test and that is coming on the 8th. And the test is going to be Mars and Jupiter square. Mars, where you're acting, where you're aiming, this is you, the first house, the south, and Jupiter coming in with justice. Jupiter for you is up in the 10th house, so the 10th house is career, uh, but it's also those things, those goals that we, we work for, and uh, the 10th house is also the midheaven, how we see ourselves, our sense, of perception of ourself, not like how other people perceive us, which is the rising sign, and Jupiter has to do with justice. So this square is going to come uh, to a point where, well, was were those decisions right a couple of days ago? So just pay attention that you're not going to get this little extra boomerang coming in there on the 8th. But regardless, the 11th is going to be a great day because we got the we got Venus, we got the Sun uh, here, is six times Saturn, which is you, your sense of authority, standing your grounds uh, in, in a very loving way, showing it too. So it's not just words, you know. It, there's actions coming in here, and I see you being very humble as you are expressing your love for what it is you believe too your partner and the Sun also standing its ground just like Venus so the 11th it's good so I would like to say ever since the last couple of days of December until January 11th it's going to be a little like this okay it's like being tested on what you truly truly believe in okay then we have on the 11th it's going to give you a little bit of a break Mercury communication is moving out of this whole area of where you're, you're very sensitive about your core values, right? It's moving out of this into the fifth house of children, creativity, uh, the things that you love to do when you have time off. It's also creative projects. So your mind is going to let go of everything here that took place. And um, then we have a, a small little to-do here 
which is going to remind you of that first week of October when uh, Venus and Mars were square. Venus being retrograde now, it's going to go back and revisit that very same issue. So what took place in October? For you right now, it's maybe the same issue. However, the planets have moved a little bit. So um, right now it's between, I would like to say, your first and fourth house again. So it's now, where do you stand as opposed to what was discussed back then? Uh, back then there was a lot of intellectual processing. There might have been a little bit more self or ego perhaps in the picture, um, the needs, the wants, but now it's more like, okay, this is my resolve because you've had plenty of time to think about it. Mars has had an extended time through Virgo where it was analyzing this very same situation. But now this is your conclusion. Venus is coming up to you and this will actually come out now in some kind of a resolve for you. January here on the 20th, 20th yes, is moving into the very same house of um, the fifth house of creativity and uh, your self-expression, it's children, it's leisure, it's hobbies, creative projects. So it's, it's going to linger there with Mercury, allowing you now to express more of that as all of this personal stuff that's been so important and so serious is now moving a little bit step by step away from it. And this is going to wrap you up by the end of the month here in Libra, where you're going to feel stronger, more self-empowered, You've come through a little, you know, it's like a spiritual weather map, right? Uh, you've just come through a little weather storm here and now feeling that you're back on safe ground. And so from January 24th onwards, well, yes, you're going to feel that you've conquered something. Um, and, and where your mind now is a little loftier, a little freer, and, and you're able to kind of act accordingly to where your desires are taking you, without having the same kind of roadblocks. Uh, and Mercury here will uh, define something for you with Saturn on the 25th that's actually going to prove to you that, okay, this is what I signed up for. This is the agreement, right? And then ending it with a little surprise here on the 29th, that is the Sun and Uranus. For you, that will be here uh, between mm, the home life uh, roots family and that with your partner so that could be a, a really nice actually surprise for you January 21st uh, 31st we have uh, not only mercury moving into uh, Pisces so it's moving out of that fun house it's going to have a very short journey there only from January 11th to January uh, 31st so you get like 20 days there where you can kind of relax but then you're going to move into a new area where you're going to have to get back to work and organize uh, again. But also on the 31st, well, the, the end of the month here is going to have you revisit that issue that you had early August. So go back and think what that was. Looks like it had to do with some major decision. I don't think the decision perhaps at the time was concluded, but it might have opened up for something that was too big to act upon and take a spontaneous decision upon. So it's kind of been lingering, working in the background, and now it's coming to the forefront again, and you're able to look at it from a higher perspective because Jupiter is now retrograde. It's going back to revisit and looking at where you were back then, where are you today? And you may not still find your resolve yet because it seems to have to do with a big decision, but when Mercury, no, when Jupiter, excuse me, when Jupiter goes direct again here, a little bit later, late winter, early spring here, when it goes direct again, it's going to come back around for the last time. In this opposition with Pluto, we'll talk about that, you know, in the months to come. But at that point, it looks like, if not before, well, then you have found some conclusion. And it's one of these, I'd like to say, probably more so, major life decisions and this is why it's taking time to, to actually reach what it is as a resolve. For you, this opposition is going to be between where you live, how you live, it's home, family and family values, it's you, your past, the way you see your past, 
where you've been, and then also where you've, you're shooting yourself as far as into the future towards new horizons. And it also has to do perhaps with career and where it is you want to expand and grow and maybe even to a point of maybe wanting to relocate at some distance away from where you are now here today. Could be. So that all depends. But this is what we have for you here at January Libra. As always, it's really good to speak with you and I'll see you next month for your February forecast. But before you go, make sure to listen to your moon and rising sign and I'll see you later. Bye now.